you uh -huh. for everything that you do today, Lord. Yes. Thank you for the decisions that's going to be made, the Lord. Uh -huh. Thank you that your word is everlasting and it will not return void, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for all of that. You are King of King and Lord of Lords, Lord of Lords. and these are your children, and they are on top in every area. So, Father, I thank you, and we speak this victory and this authority in Jesus' name. Jesus. And everyone said amen. amen. All right, now say these words. This is my Bible. I am what the Word says I am. And I have what the Word of God says I have. I certainly can do what the Word says I can do. Today I'm going to learn because my mind is alert, my heart is fertile, and I desire to learn. Therefore, I will learn. And I will never be the same, be the same. As, a as a result of God's, God's indestructible, indestructible ever-living, ever -living, dynamic, dynamic incorruptible, incorruptible, the seed of life, seed of life the, word of the word of God, I boldly receive. I boldly receive, I boldly receive, I boldly receive and I will never be the same. Be the same. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, family. Now, <clears throat> we've been teaching on several weeks uh, the truth of the matter, God is love. Now, before I get started good, let me just welcome everybody that's listening by streaming. We got a dynamic work for you. And uh, Connie put 20 minutes on the clock. I forgot to tell y'all, so I'm just looking at the time. God is love, and what that simply means is that God is the foundation of everything. How many agree? Amen. Everything in the universe was created by God, and it was established because he is love, he is a God of love, and we need to receive that and understand that God is straight up love. And there's, there's no variance in that. We do what we do and we have what we have because of who God is. God is love. And uh, <clears throat> so what the enemy does, he's always in opposition of what God has done. Satan, that it is, I'm who I'm talking about. Uh, I want to start by talking about behavior that is in complete opposition of the love of God. Behavior that is put in place to eradicate or remove us from walking in love. So behavior that is in opposition or complete opposition of love. Uh, Jesus gives this powerful teaching in Luke. And I love it. And he starts by saying, Jesus is teaching, and he starts and ends with dealing with our behavior and how it ought to be applied in this earth realm. So this is what he say, love your enemies. Is that powerful? Yes. Love who? That is a powerful thing, to love your enemies. Somebody been hating on you, you're going to show them love. But generally what happens is when uh, somebody hates on you, what is the easiest thing to do? To hate back on them. And it feel good, but that's not God. God wants us to have, like him, that unconditional love. God loved us not based on anything that we deserve, but based on the love of the Father. He sent his, he sent his son based on the love of the Father for us. So it's powerful to understand the significance of it. As I've been teaching during this, love is just not love your kids, love your neighbor, love your culture, love your community. God, if the love of God in you is not segregated just to those areas, the love of God will apply in every area when it's the love of God. But man-made, learned, developed, manufactured love, it can be limited. Just, I love my daughter, I love my son, I love my kids, I love my house, I love my dog. And, and that's a very small, minute ability to love comparison to the love of God. He says, I just don't love those who, who I love, who are my family, but I also love my enemy. And what he is saying unconditionally, we gotta go beyond these barriers the outward expression of love, looking at people and determining whether we're gonna love them or not. So he, he cancels that all out. So openly, <clears throat> let's open with Luke chapter six. That's good what Jesus teaches, teaching Luke six and 38. Praise God. Let's go there. Luke chapter 6 and verse 37. Know what he says. Judge not, you say it. Judge not. That's Luke 6 and what? 
37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Now you must understand this is Jesus speaking. He's talking about the Father judging you based on you judging other people. I can't, you need to understand you can't afford it. We're not just stumbling around every day in life just to get along, but we're about the purpose of God. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Is that powerful? Now, let me tell you this. When a person condemns another person, what does that mean? It means that you're saying something about a thing or, or person uh, that their wrong could never be right, that evil could never be fixed. You have created some kind of godly punishment upon them. They can't get saved. They can't be helped. It's not fixable, and it can never get better. When you judge, that's what you actually do. And so many times, out of where people are at, I said it this morning, intellectually, academically, from around the world, when you look at the psychology of people, when you judge somebody, you only can judge based on where you're at. If you got a third grade education, you can't judge me intellectually because you don't have that, agri- that potential. You only judge where you're at. So that's the horrible thing. You might come from a very bad, tore up situation and you sit in the place on judgment on somebody. Mm. You can't do that. You don't really have the ability to do that appropriately. At least when in the court of law, if a person is going to be uh, judged, they'll get what we call a credible witness with academics and scholarship behind their name and then we use them because they're not going to be judging the way you did around the corner. And a lot of us are judging people the way we lived around the corner. Mm. How can a broke man judge a rich man? You really can't do it, but we, we, we come up with these different assessments. So I just want you to know, like God is standing in front of you. When you start judging people, you move God out of the way and you stand in the place of God. And that's why God said, if you condemn, I will what? Condemn you. So when you are condemning people, a lot of times we're talking and you're really condemning somebody. They can't get better. It can't get fixed. And we know with God, what? All things are possible. So you have to watch that. You're looking at a person and holding them, looking at them with discontent simply because you heard something about them. A lot of times when you hear stuff, you ain't really experienced. You're just taking somebody's opinion. Ain't that crazy? You know what the Bible says about opinion? He says, don't be wise in your own, what? Opinion. So we have to come up to get away from judgment. We talked about uh, judging people, and then the worst is condemning somebody. When you condemn them, you ain't gonna ever get better. It's like even when you're talking, that's what you're saying in your talking. You ain't gonna never get better. You ain't gonna never get fixed. You are done for life. But that's why Jesus came to this world that we might, might, might be saved. He didn't come to condemn us. If he came to condemn us, we wouldn't be in existence, but he came that we might have freedom from this world system. And I want everybody to go to St. John. Go to St. John real quick, please. So if you condemn, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be condemned. But who's going to condemn you? God himself. I don't need it. I don't know about you. You a bad something to think that you're going to out-condemn God. He is the one that opened up life. Remember when Jesus was dealing with the religious people, they ran up on him and said, man, who are you are thinking you can forgive sin? He prayed for the woman and said, you're forgiving your sin. Go your way. Who you think you are? I mean, they were messing with the wrong person. They were messing with the Son of God. And what Jesus was basically saying, that I am not going to condemn you. Get up and go your way. You are forgiven. Get up and go. I'm not going to stand in a place. Some people's whole life is based on hating on somebody else. Is that ridiculous? So what happens a lot of times, you know, what's, what's the worst thing is that you end up going to hell. You done did this and did this and stayed and held on to this kind of behavior for so long and then bam, you end up dying and go to hell and going like, I thought I was saved. You ain't saved just sitting in the pew. Did you hear me? You're not saved just going to a building and naming a church. It's, we are doers of the word. Jesus said, if you, if you abide in my word, my word abide in you, then you're my disciple indeed. And he said, you'll know my disciples because they have love one for another. So it's just not uh, saying these things, but there is a level of action. Here, three. This is why Jesus came. St. John 3 and uh, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that they would through him might be saved. That's why Jesus, that's why the father sent him. Go to uh, St. John. I mean, yeah, St. John 8. 
St. John 8. St. John 8. Everybody with me? Verse, in, in this particular uh, situation, there was a woman who was caught in the act. Are you with me? Said so she was caught in the act of adultery because she was with a man that, that was not married and they were uh, about to handle some business. But in that culture right there, if you didn't, you know, people didn't have state jobs, they just had a job, they didn't have a job, and so she was using her body to make money. Everybody know what that means, right? Don't say it out, but what those people are called. I said don't say it. Don't say it. But that, that's a person that's making a living based on using their body. And so these men, they found out where she would show up at certain times. And think about it. If these men found out where they were going, they were all trying to go to see what they can get themselves. They weren't going to listen. They were going to take and they were, they were worse than her. And they going over there to get with the woman. But somebody beat them all there. And then they say, you know what, man? She in there already. Let's kill her. Is that cold? And so they're going to stone the woman to death. What they do, they dig a hole, put you in the hole, then put the dirt in where your body is like this in a standstill. Many times those kind of deaths, not only are they painful, but when you see the person after all them big old rocks and hit them, ain't nothing left. And these men were going to do that to her. Let's stone her to death. So they start in the process and note who walked up. His name was Jesus. He walked up on them and he just said, oh, whoa, what's, what's going down, fellas? Oh, no, we about to stone her to death. We caught her in the act with a nasty. Well, they just as nasty as she was. They wasn't going over there to talk about Jesus. So they get over there with the lady, and uh, Jesus hits the, go down on his knees, and he just began to hear the Father. And everybody froze up when he went down like that. And then all of a sudden, he rises up. He said, I tell you what, fellas, whoever would have any sin, throw the first stone and then just walked off. Throw the first, whoever done this, throw the first stone. And they say they all dropped their rocks and walked. Isn't that something? There's a parallel scripture uh, where Jesus himself, he said, any man that have eyes to lust, you've already committed the adultery because you did it in your heart with your nasty self. You walk around saying, praise the Lord, but you just, you know, your eyes is, you know, a lot of times, everybody look at me. Just because somebody's looking at in the way of a woman or a way of a man don't mean they lusting. You are in judgment now. You're trying to tell me what my heart is saying without even questioning me. What you looking at? Well, whatever they're looking at is their eyes. So Jesus says to the woman, look, after he spoke that, he was teaching a message about love. Don't nobody have no right to be judging nobody. You definitely have no right condemning nobody, meaning you ain't going to never be forgiven you with your nasty self. That's crazy. When have, I want to ask you, when last time you done died on the cross and got up? So you need to leave God's people alone and sinners alone. Sometimes I've heard people say, ooh, look at that. They going straight to hell, and you the main one going straight to hell. We need to humble ourselves, man. Without God's mercy, we all be tore all the way up. Because everything that we once was will come back on us. I can't afford it. I don't know about you. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. And so, and because when, he, when I say your mercy and stuff, he ain't just talking about what you've currently did, the physical things you actually acted out, but even the stuff that was in your heart. That sometimes you could sit somewhere and just kill somebody in your mind. I will kill that. I wish she would say something to me. They can have my job. I'm already ready for unemployment. We're going to tear that lunchroom clean up today. And so all of a sudden you put braids and pin your hair back. And don't even wear no earrings that day. You going in there to whoop up on somebody. Talking about Jesus. I know you're going to have mercy after I finish with her. That's crazy. That is, that's wrong. So we don't ever want to get into to condemning people. So, so what Jesus say? He rise up, he rise up, he get up, and he just tell him, if you got, you know, any reason to deal with this woman, you ain't committed no sin, go ahead and throw the stone. And then he said, daughter, now where are your accusers? 
he was letting her know, don't ever, none of y'all let no man condemn you. Because when people do stuff like that and it get back to you, it, it affects your heart, it affects your love. You be going like, as much as I can help that tramp, I mean that person. <laughs> they got nerve enough to be talking some stuff. If everybody at the church knew they were a child molester, I would guarantee you wouldn't be inviting them to your house no more. See, in the, as a pastor, I teach y'all to love unconditionally. So when people leave here, you still love them. You don't know why they left. I don't really care. My job is to teach you. You can go wherever you want to go. You ain't going to stop my blessing. Are you with me? It's like sometimes people think this person ain't here is going to affect our church. Our church then went up a half a million dollars. If I'd have knew the better, I'd have heard it. I'd have just kicked, it, kicked them out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we have to stop thinking that people control our destiny. How could we go... How could we go in COVID in one year, a half million dollar increase? Because God honor his word. God honor a real man of God. My life ain't based on people. It's based on God. Say it. My life ain't based on people, but based on God. And you walk in, you get sound in that word. Rightly dividing that word, get sound in it, it will, you will never fail. Your progress will never be impeded upon because God's word will not return void. Look at, look at, uh, look at this right here, St. John 8, and uh, focus on verse 10. And when Jesus rose himself up, he saw no one but the woman. He said to her, woman, where are, your, where are these accusers of yours? Have no one condemned you? She said, no, Lord, because nobody can condemn y'all. That's not saying you ain't never sinned. You, between now and eternity, you might sin at least one more time with your greedy self. At least one more time. But God is not going to condemn you, children. All you got to do, he said, walk in the light as he in the light and have fellowship with one another. He forgive you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Is that a beautiful thing? And uh, we're not going, I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to break relationship. I'm not going to stop loving. And I'm not going to bring my left down to mediocrity by the same measures. I want the same measure to be measured back to me. And then right here in verse 11, and she said, no, Lord. He asked her, where were your accusers? And he said, no, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Jesus said, neither do I what? Say, Jesus hasn't condemned me. And will not condemn me. Now everybody look at me. You must repent though. You must repent. Don't sit up in there. Don't repent. You know what you did last night. Repent. Don't be just trying to roll with it. And then coming here peeking at me. Like I know what you did. I don't know what the Holy Spirit do. Yeah he know what you did with your little nasty self. You need to repent. Amen. You need to repent. Stop all that stuff. Stop catering to your flesh. And then trying to justify it. It's just me in here. Jesus. No, you're a lot. Stop all that. The mention in Jesus' name and some of the stuff you're thinking about. When you sneaky with it, Jesus know you sneaky doing stuff you ain't got no business doing. Ain't nobody saying amen. I don't care. The way you be thinking, little sneaky, tricky, bad, bad head. So look, look. Jesus, it's beautiful. What Jesus say? He say, he said this. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's all he said. So we do repent. We keep moving on. Now, here's one thing that's very important. Everybody listen to me. Are you listening? Giving opens the door to the promise. Is love an act of faith? Yes. Is giving an act of faith? When you give, it opens up a door. Everybody listen to me carefully. Stop, just everybody freeze. I'm going to show you how to get the manifestation of rich. Certainly, you cannot go to a 1,000 acres and just speak to the 1,000 acres without planting a natural seed to get something back. But what you have to do is have a mentality, have a, a, like a relentless attitude, attitude about your relationship with God. I don't care how much I have, you got... What you got, your life is going to outlive what you got in the bank. <clears throat> Sometimes out of fear, we'll hoard it. We won't tithe on it. You know, you, you just got to get in a habit of saying, all right, every time you see, somebody raise your hand 
and and uh, it, it look around. Is anybody in this church you love? Do you know their name? Okay, Bridget, uh, tell me somebody's name that you know in here. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Now, do you love her? Do you you, you see uh, Miss Bridget back there? You love her. Every time y'all see each other, there's like joy. You greet each other, right? And and this is the kind of way that you learn how to give. You can't give out of your poverty. You know what I'm saying? You've been scrubbing and, and scrubbing and scrabbling and trying to put together a bologna sandwich and got half a piece of bread and a, a little bologna and ain't got no dressing on it. <laughs> and the bread is six days old. So for all, you having your hands up because I want you to understand giving is just in your heart. Right. You cannot ba- be looking at your bills and all of that and scared to listen. You gotta listen. Uh-huh. Some of the richest people, the ones who are successful, they hear and listen to God. Mm. I got people in this church now that are straight millionaires. They didn't start that way, but they got that way. Yeah. Start little. They start little. They was in college like you, but they just stayed with it. And every time I get, they just would not let poverty beat them down. Mm. Whether you've seen poverty in your life or not, that ain't you. That's just an experience. That's just a temporary situation but you are the redeemed of the Lord. I refuse to be broke. I was saying it in first service. My first year coming out of high school, they had invited me to the citywide all-star team as the youngest person on there. And a dude from my high school was a senior. He was supposed to pick me up and that sucker never picked I was gonna kill him. I miss, I miss being on a team with Hall of Famers simply because this chump Tim told me, excuse me, I almost said something else. He told me he was going to pick me up, and he didn't pick me up. So you know what I did? That summer, I worked about three, four jobs, saved my money, and bought my own car. And so somebody say, oh, man, you got a nice car. Man, in high school, I had a car. Why am I going to be in a darn Toyota or Bucket now? You got to be retarded. If a man could buy his own car in high school, I'm a grown man with flavor. I'm going to be like you. You ain't experienced. You ain't done what I've done. So I supposed to be like you. That's the poverty thing. Somebody want to hold you back. Well, ooh, that's ex- it might be expensive to you. You know what I mean? So y'all need to, we, we got to lose that, that poverty stuff. Oh, look at him. They must be stealing something. He got a nice car. Well, I had a, I've always had nice cars. So I supposed to stop having a nice car? I remember, uh, put your hands down. Y'all so blessed. I had a little car, me and my first wife had a little car called a champ, remember that? I gave, I, I gave it to my mom, I said, here mama, take, take it, take it, you know, she just took, we got another car, it, it, was, it, was, they, it was made at the alley, a champ. But the thing is, man, I'm not teaching you to be the same, I'm teaching you, people miss what I'm talking about, 90%, they miss what Jesus is talking about. Why would a man that had the ability to work and own his own car, now he driving a bucket, and that's, oh, it's cool. But you see me driving a nice car. Ooh, he must be stealing something. That's why yo, that's why yo, where you at right now? You won't let go of stupid and innocent cultural dumbness and judging people. You don't know people's, you don't know what they got. But out of our own mentality, we start judging people incorrectly. We don't want to do that. Now let's go back. If you want to be financially wealthy, that's why you had your hand up. You just got to start giving. Stop trying to count 10%. You can't even count enough to get your bills paid. You know, not, not us, because we prospering in here. Uh, whether you know it or not, we eating up in here. This church is on fire. I just said we're going to do Seed Sunday, and in one day, y'all met half the budget without begging or nothing. I must be teaching something. I tell y'all in one day, we need to buy a member a car, and y'all throw the money out. And they got a car and go. I'm setting a standard on what church ought to be. It's not just trying to pile some money in for the dude, but it's for, for us to prosper. For I can take this gospel to London, to ink, everywhere. Amen. Setting men free through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yeah, like that, like that. That's what we ought to be doing. And, and broke is not God's will. Poor is not God's will. That is not God's will. Everybody, if you will lose your life and find your life, you'll prosper. Because, like, think about it. Like, guys like Bill Gates, this dude is going towards a trillion dollars. 
if you just take, like I was just talking about the credit, I'll talk about that later. But if you just take a piece of this money for 30 days, man, he makes so many million, that's enough to get everybody a little something. Okay. That's my endeavor, to have stuff for y'all. To have businesses where you have integrity and, and you can walk. We ain't running around scuffling and buffling and mad. Because when you broke, you be mad all the time. Shoot, you can't pay nothing. Shoot, cussing and stuff. You stay hungry. Poverty, keep, I ain't lying. When you're in poverty, you stay hungry. Am I, am I? It's like, what happened to the crackers? I just bought some crackers. <laughs> Why am I got my, my, my crackers? Who was it that you got my crackers? Give me my crackers. And you know what's next? I'm going to whoop somebody. Uh-uh. Ain't going there. So giving is out of the heart, not trying to meet a tithe. Go, to, go back to Luke 6 and 38. Now, we pay our tithes in here, but if you're just trying to pay a tithe, you're going to get to there and stop. But if you give, you get to the tithe and keep on going. And I'm concerned about y'all more than I'm concerned about me. It's these people. But where Dean is at? Dean, the lambs. Oh, there they are. There's two of them. Mama lamb and daddy lamb. They just straight blessed. Dina's anointing on her. Her dad got on her. These people love the Lord. That girl straight up love the Lord. Amen. That anointing all through their children, all of them tied. Except for David. I mean, with David. <laughs> <laughs> where David is. I won't let they, I will not let him stop growing every time I say, man, you seven foot. He said, Pastor, stop saying that. I keep growing. <laughs> He's going to be like 50 years old, still growing. I'm eight foot. Hey, David, you still growing. Man, will you be quiet? <laughs> but God is good. Luke, Luke 6 and 38, it says, given it will be given to you. See, the first thing is not tied, it will be given to you. Give and it will be what? Given to you. Given will be given to you, good measure. In other words, what he's trying to compute is that you'll get so much, you can't even deal with it. Watch what it say. Given it will be given to you, Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom, will put into your heart or into your life. Are you with me? Into your life. For with the same measure you use, it'll be what? Everybody listen to me. Stop tolerating. You know, when I say tolerating, what that means is I'm okay with just enough to pay my bills and I'm okay on occasions to go to McDonald's. I'm okay with that. You are lying okay with that? I might want to get a fish sandwich, you know. I ain't trying to go to make, you know what I'm saying? I might want to go to Newport. You can't just be okay. I'm good. My bills are paid. I'm good. Your, your taste level is crazy. You haul off and get with a rich dude, you know, you ain't going to know what to do. He, you know, you got to get to the place where you're, you know, you're way past your needs. And it's like, you know, you want to get to the place when you with millionaires, you could pay the bill. Instead of always something for nothing. They get the bill. Give me the bill. I invited you. Text me back. Say, hey, next time, don't trip, man. I'm paying the bill. Maybe. You got to learn when there's an opportunity. If, that, if a person got a million and you paying for the bill, you tapping into some of their stuff now. Instead of always got your mouth wide open, eyes buck wide, and your hands stuck out. Stop it. What'd I say? Stop it. What'd I say? Stop it. Because I watch this. Everybody listen to me. You may not have a penny, but if you get a desire in your heart, the Lord will sow seed to the sower. He'll sow seed to the sower. Where's Janet at? Oh, there she is right over there. <laughs> you ain't do nothing. <laughs> you just a good support, a strong support of your pastor. And we we'll tell the truth in a minute. I'm not going there. What I tell what y'all stop for? I didn't tell you this. My time is up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, it's a and so I'm gonna read the whole thing. Given it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Man, put into your bosom. For the same measure you use, it'll be what? Measured back to you. It'll be what? Measured back to you. So it is important to measure. It is important. It's important to increase. Man, I love to give. God gave me that spirit. I was at my mom's house about three years ago. And she said, I was in her room, and she said, you know who gave me them? It was some crystal. She said, you know who you gave me them? I said, no. She said, you did. 
So I got that from her. That's a part of our family DNA, learning how to give. Are you with me? That's powerful. Do you know that my grandmother's father fought at Pearl Harbor? And you wonder why I'm so bad. <laughs> you wonder why she's a hard worker. It, you, know, you, you know, when you're getting started in life, one of the worst enemies, we just straight, some people are straight, almost say, you're just lazy. You got to learn how to work. People will love you if you will work. Sleeping all day long ain't for a man of God. I call you and you in the, you, it's like midday, you in the bed, I'm going like, oh, bro, you must have, what, you got symptoms, brother? What's going on? What's your problem? You a grown, a, a grown man. Get yourself up. Next time I call, it's like that, I'm going to roll over there with a couple of brothers. We're going to get you out of bed for sure. All of a sudden, these big old tall, strong dudes walk in there, and you're going like, Fellas, what is it? Can we discuss? Ain't no discussing now. <laughs> but no, but really, work ethic. He said, he said, the lazy man desire to have and have not, but the Lord reward the diligent. All right, now, 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 let me give you this. Let me finish. So I just want everybody to see that giving, as Jesus is talking about in this text, is, is so crucial to open up the door to his promises. And he speaks this parable. And what this parable is about, if a person can't lead his own life, how can he lead other people? And in churches, you'll have people who will appear to be, quote unquote, spiritual or popular in the church, and people will gravitate to that for one reason, because you, you're trying to find leadership. And this, everybody look at me. I got, to, I got to do this because in all of my ministry, I have never taught a lesson that you're supposed to love your pastor. So you got haters that'll be here or just people that'll be here. It's nothing wrong with going somewhere else, but you ain't going to stop me from growing. And you're going to go and lie and say, I ain't teaching the word. You're going to go to hell. You're going to bust hell wide open. You are going to die. You are not going to have success. You got to be out your mind to let that come out your mouth and let God hear you say it. He said, I'm going to hold you accountable for every idle word. You got to be straight and sane to let something, something demonic like that to come out of you. So I teach y'all to love each other, but I never hardly teach about loving your pastor. Do you know that your pastor is the second, outside of God, most important person in your life? Yes. I don't know. You can play foolish with me if you want. How many times have I called you when your life was on the line, or I called you, or right when, or... It's a difference between a man and a body versus a man of God. I rise up in the morning and I tell the Lord, you know, Lord, you know what? You put these sheep in my hands, so I need you to protect because I got a lot of foolish ones out there. So protect them today, Lord. I got members in the church. Some of you still tripping and dipping. And so I got to pray for you. What A pastor is not a sermon on Sunday. It's the, all the other stuff. If I write you a letter, it's going to go through. Because if it's really, if you raggedy with it, I ain't going to write it. So you might well forget it. <laughs> I ain't going to write it. But that, that's the thing. It's, it, it's not personal popularity, but what God, Jesus himself, I give you men after my heart. <laughs> that he's going to have insight. I don't, I'm going to go to church. He's going to preach. Man, you ain't that important for me to particularly. I could just call you and say, you tripping. I'm not going to waste no whole time to teach the congregation trying to talk to you because you know me. I call you straight up. You did it? Yeah, I did. All right, you need to stop, fool. Because you're going to get in trouble and then you're going to have me down there trying to help you. Amen. Amen. I don't, man, it's too many. With, with growth and promotion, it's a lot come with it. It's like, it's like 24 hours a day, something is happening, whether it's you or somebody around, it, something is happening. People see a necessity now that there's an anointing they can tap into that work. I'll tell, if I tell you something, please, you may not understand, you may not quite understand, just do what I say. Because if I take the time to tell you something, 100% God had already pre-prepared and warning me about something. And some, some of us are just, we're just busy or we're just sometimes halty and sometimes straight ignorant. And so 
<laughs> so you got to listen. That's all, all I have is the ability to hear God. That is, that is the key thing. I can hear God. Kings of old days and olden times, when the king knew he had to go to war, he would always be this way. It'd be the king, the priest, and his wife. Not any other order. The king is on my right hand. I mean, the priest is on my right hand. Because if we're going to go down here and lose 20,000 young men, okay, who want to lose their brother, their brother dead, come back gutted up, half a head, leg gone, and they bringing all those bodies back, dead. So the king say, why should I go to war if the priest say, don't go? Priest say, you know what, this, ain't, this one we ain't going to win. Let that one pass. Give them what they need. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> I mean, you look outside your castle, outside your gate, and there's 100,000 men mad, and they ain't ate in 10 days. And you look in the back of the gate where we can escape, they got men back there. So it's going to be hell on the women and the children and everybody else left. Are you with me? So this whole thing about hearing God is the most important thing that we could ever do. Hebrews gives a, a, rend a rendition of that. Hebrews chapter uh, 13 17 he says obey those who rule over you but the more hebrew literate term of that obey those who lead you is he a spirit-filled man if you're not spirit-filled speaking in your heavenly language walking by faith you really are not fit to lead people you can teach them a lot of religion but you ain't fit to lead them if you got a devil that's sneaky and tricky how in the world i'm gonna be teaching you natural trying to treat you psychology from the pulpit all i'm doing is saying let me get y'all ready for death um, let me get y'all ready for an early grave with pain and suffering because it's only through the Holy Spirit that we elevate through all that. I have a lot of people and people come in and it's up to you to commit to what I'm teaching. If you commit, you're going to prosper. I said, if you commit, you're going to prosper. I said, if you commit, you're going to prosper. And then what's so cold about it, the world can't control your destiny. You hear what I'm saying? It don't even matter how high your LSAP score is. It may be, high, you know, above average or something, but that's not what's going to keep you from in school. It's what you say going to keep you from being in school. So it's, it's just a, a phenomenon of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that we have available to us. If you tap into that and live by it, you're going to eat. I said you're going to eat spiritually and physically because I can see y'all eating good in this church. I can see y'all eating good. But we need to eat as well spiritually as well. So let me give you this conclusion here. So <clears throat> it's important not to get into uh, allowing the love of God to become an opposition to you. As Jesus spoke in that parable, he was simply saying, man, the blind can't lead the blind. And it's like I was talking about what is the main reason we have good credit? To buy a house? No. Good credit is a part of your citizenship. I was saying in first service, you know, you take uh, like Mr. Gates, he might do a $75 million loan. He got the money to pay for it 100 times. But what he will do is he will use the system. So he'll take out the loan, and with the $75 that he allocated to do this project, he put it in the bank for 30 days. Uh, Festus, in 30 days, $75 million. How much in 30 days, how much can you make on that? How much? About what? Uh, 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 75 million? 75 million. Get your calculator. You off. 75 million in, in 30 days. It'll be more than 21,000. Because I got, I can, you know, no, it'll be way more than that in 30 days. $75 million, 30 day float? That's a grip. Dry, you smart to calculate that. Somebody hit it on a calculator. I know I got people in here in math. At 10%. At what's 10% of 75 million? What's 10%? That's seven point, yeah. He was, he was right. He was saying 75,000. Seven, what? 7.5 million. How much? Oh, 625000 at 10%? Well, some people ain't never seen 600000 in their accountant, period. 
But what I'm just saying, I'm talking about credit. The reason we have credit is a part of our citizenship. So usually why we don't, we don't have parents that train us up. They, you train your children up and start saying, okay, at, there's a point in America when you first begin to come out of high school, they, the system can see it. So they allow you in the game. So they give you all them little pre-approved credit cards. And the first thing, what do we do? What they do when you get it? Max it out. And that's the worst thing you can do with a credit card is max it out. I got credit card lines, 10,000 all the way. I don't put no stuff on them. Because that's going to, if you had eight, that's going to start bringing it down. That's how they measure your indebtedness, them open cards. And some people, you buying, paying your laundry with it, you buying food with it, whoopie woo, movie woo, gasoline, and gasoline is high, you know, just you going crazy. You have to stay away from that. So your score can stay up. So when you really need to have some power to use the bank, you can use the bank. Amen. It's not getting credit just to get a house. And I see people in here doing it. Well, I'm going to get my credit just to get a house. Then after you get the house, your credit back bad again. No, a credit is you. Your credit is you. And you should work on having it. Good credit is you. That means I can trust you in America. Either I, can, either I can't, bad credit mean I can't trust you. I had a friend one time to go get a car. And they used to let you take the car for the weekend and try it out. They still do that? <laughs> they won't let you off the lot with it on a test drive. They, do they still do test drives? Okay, so, so oh, they got to be with you? All of a sudden, this was back in the 70s. The dude took the car for the weekend and brought it back. They ran his credit, and when he... The, man, the, the, the salesman was like crying mad. They had run his credit. He couldn't, even, he couldn't even get a cup of coffee up in there. And so my friend gets in the car, and the dude was crying. He thought he had a deal, and the manager's on him. They looked at his stuff. They knew the long, ain't no way that this long gonna go through in 30 years. We, <laughs> he, he got in the car with his wife to leave, and the man came out and said, your credit stinks. <laughs> He was crying. The man was physically crying because he, this man had cost him his job. So credit, having credit cards and credit is a part of our American citizenship. All it means, you're going to pay more back. Well, I only, it was only $300. You're going to end up paying $5,000 off that $300 if you don't handle it. Because you know what you're going to do? That $2 minimum. $2 minimum. $2 minimum, $2 minimum. And they're charging you 20% around the clock. So 10 years later, you still stuck on the $300 minimum with a $2 piece, a $2 meal type thing. So you want to have good credit so we can trust each other. And that's what the bank, they can trust you, right? You know, like, what's your score? Zero. You know, I don't need, have y'all heard this? I don't need no credit. Yeah, I, I, I just flow with cash. You ain't got no cash, though. <laughs> you gonna flow with cash when you get some? So it's a part of, if you go to, if you're here and you go to uh, Iowa, if you go to Pittsburgh, you can get a rental car with a car without your ATM card. Because the minute you try to get the rental car with the ATM card, they're taking all the money off of it right there. And now you can't even get a hotel because you have the money, but it's locked in. But that whole week, you need that rent. You know, all that, that's poverty, man. It's time to rise up out of that. I said, it's time to rise up. I said, it's time to rise up. So what Jesus is simply saying here, and then watch this. If you owe the, the darn man and he called you just trying to make a payment arrangement, that's not an opportune time to cuss the man out. Don't be calling my house. Or like, I ain't here. You are here. They trying to just get paid. Can we get a minimum pay? <laughs> what is that? You wasn't doing that when you were running down there buying stuff. <laughs> and, and, and standing in line when they have you ever standing in line? Give me your credit card. You standing there just praying in the spirit that it go through. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, let that go through praise in the name of Jesus. You just waiting while it, while they process is being processed. You just waiting, going like, he shall not suffer for the rest of 
Hasati ta 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 ta. And then try to slam your hand about a machine and touch it. He said, ta 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 ta. Sorry, ma'am, your car didn't go through. <laughs> hey, man, them days are over. I said, them days are over. <laughs> okay, now, uh, go ahead on. Go to uh, Luke, Luke 6 and 39. And be up there, man, I hate America. <laughs> Where your broke butt gonna go then? <laughs> You can't catch no flight nowhere. <laughs> okay, here we go. 39, 39. Are you with me now? And it says, he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lean the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? Everybody see that? And so <clears throat> before I go to this next verse, I just want to say this. Satan will use a lie to block the truth. Everybody with me? That sucker is a co. He co. He will use the word to straight up block the truth. Everybody with me on that? And so right here, this is what he says. Let me just read this. Verse 40. A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who perfectly trains will be like his teacher. That's what we get like, like precious faith. That's what we get, like, allow your light to shine that men might see your good works. <clears throat> we don't want to elevate ourselves and our mind above Jesus. <clears throat> and so Satan will straight up use a lie. He'll use a lie to get you. Have anybody ever lied to you and you believe the lie and find out that they were lying? So I'll just be listening to the truth. I ain't trying to deal with no lies, man. Because Satan will, you know, out of our honesty, honesty and sincerity of our heart, we listen to people and they straight lying. Remember, if you lie in the past, I'm going to catch you sooner or later. You lying, I'm going to catch you. The Holy Spirit is the one going to catch you. And so you don't need to be lying. Just tell the truth. Pastor, I just want to let you know up front, I was raggedy as I'm. I said, okay, then, you raggedy. You know, I'm going to put you on a leash because I can't trust your raggedy self, but we can work together. But when you're lying, trying to pose yourself as one thing and you being another thing, that's going to get you in trouble. Forget me. What about the raft of God? <laughs> Woo. Satan will use a lie to block us <clears throat> like uh, like this in Genesis. I didn't get a chance to say it. Go to Genesis uh, chapter three. I'm going to show you something real quick. So this is what the devil want to do. He want to get you into a lie and you get mad at God. And so because you can't see God, you mad at me. Your radio blew up. So you come to church mad. I ain't had nothing to do with your ready. All my food spoiled already. The, the electricity was out. If I wouldn't have been in Bible study, my, I would at least caught it. You crazy. Whether you in Bible study or not, you ain't paid the bill. That electricity is going to be off. <laughs> ain't going to come up here mad at me, just mad, just walking in. And Usher's going to like, put a body next to that one. All right, watch this. Genesis. What did I say? Genesis 3. It says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, have God indeed said you shall not eat of any or tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may not eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you should not eat. You should not eat, nor should you touch, at least you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Is he lying? Yes. And that's what Satan tried to do with our love. He tried to get situations, people, and circumstances where we listen to somebody. Don't be listening to nobody in this church. You listen to God. Love your pastor. They ain't, you know, you be listening to people in the church, they ain't got the ability to pray for you. They ain't praying for themselves, but you be rolling with them instead of listening to your pastor. When have I ever told you something that didn't, that didn't work? Tell them for you need a loan or you need some help. Watch what's going to happen. You ain't going to get nothing. If I'm teaching y'all to love one another, why can't I teach you to love me? I love your self. Yeah, you will surely, you will surely die. That's what the devil said. And God knows that in that day, you eat 
of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Now, that's a lie. God is in us. We ain't like him, knowing good and evil. So he just straight tricked this woman out of her blessing. I ain't say I ain't losing my blessing. Go to Isaiah 14. I'm not losing my blessing fooling with you. I ain't losing my blessing fooling with no darn devil. And then when you all raggedy and everything, then the devil laughing. <laughs> Talking about where your faith at now, fool. Isaiah 14. So the devil uses a lie to separate us from love. Watch this. Everybody look at me. If somebody on your nerve still love them, I ain't telling you to go drive up to their house. I'm just saying when God opened up a door for you to see them, love them. Don't remember what, you, what they did. I have people that stole from me. Do you know you're going to go to hell even if you know that they did it? You're still a partner with it? So I, if, if, I, if I was evil, I'd just say, Lord, give them what they deserve. I cannot do that. I have to say, Lord, bless these people. He did not know what he was doing because they will go to hell. Satan will get you and your whole family and blow the car up at one time. I'm telling you. I'm t that's how Satan do it. You didn't move so far from grace and mercy and then something like that kick off. Everything we do is of consequence. He says, God will hold us accountable for every idle word. Okay, what's your name? <clears throat> you don't be, here's Dixie. You're going to be trying to take Dixie's side and hating somebody else because of how Dixie feels. You better let that person do their thing. You're going to go to hell for them. You're going to give up your life for them. You're going to lose your blessing for them. God ain't made nobody like that. Amen. Whether it's your mama, your daddy, you're going to lose your blessing with God because your friend or your cousin or somebody mad with somebody. Man, you can take that stuff to the pit of hell. I'm not going to be losing my blessing. I'm going to do what the word says. I'm going to love everybody. If you got a problem, you deal with your problem. You ain't, you ain't got no relationship with nobody on this earth that deep. You didn't lost your mind because they will give you up in a heartbeat. And you run around there trying to get an allegiance with some fool. Raggedy at that. And if you look, they raggedy is the place down there. And you trying to give up your blessing for them. They the one chose not to go to college. They the one chose to get in the situation they are. They could be a better, higher person if they'd have made an effort. But they chose not to make an effort. So now you're going to mess my whole life up, fooling with you. Can the blind lead the blind? Absolutely not. So how, what information can you give me? You can tell me how to, oh, you can tell me how to smoke weed. Oh, you can teach me how to fornicate. All you got to do is live long enough and don't be right. You're going to do that, no problem. So we as people... As your pastor, we got to rise up past this street mess. Amen. People with no responsibility just say stuff about anybody. They evil as hell. At least the person you're going to pick a war with, go on the internet, go and find their background and see. They could be an the ex-CIA agent. CIA, just waiting for you to do something. They take your little raggedy and your little raggedy family out. We do not think. Think the devil is an artist in danger, killing, murder. Keep your mouth off of people. She got a problem. He got a problem. Let them have a problem. That ain't my problem. I'm going to break relationship with you because of you. Please. People can be straight ignorant and the devil is an expert in taking us. If he could mess with Eve, this girl got everything going on. She got Nordstrom's everything. It wouldn't matter for some leaves. She got leaves. You know, she got Nordstrom's. She could put any color leave on any day. Walk how she want to walk any day. <laughs> she, can get some, she can get some leaves and have some red bottoms. I'm gone. I'm the baddest girl in the land. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but I'm just dealing with it. I'm dealing with it because you know what? I love you. And this world system is not designed for us to work. But it'll work if you work the truth. I mean, how in the world do I prosper? Because I stay with the word. And people, here it is, you getting advice from somebody ain't never tithed in their life. So what, what is their mentality? What is their mentality about somebody's prophet? They stealing, they robbing, they crooks. You're going to go to hell. I've been working since I've been 14 years old, ain't stole nothing. And your raggedy, long head going to open your mouth against a man of God. Be comfortable with your little house because you're going to definitely bust hell wide open sooner or later. So everybody, we have to just come up and love people. Am I, am I, am I lying? No, you're not. 
We got to come up and love people and be able to help people come up. I said, help each other come up. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, come on, you coming up with me. We all coming up. Come on, we coming up. Come on. Come on, long head. Come on, we coming up. You hear me? Let, let it go. Come up, listen to your husband. Let it go. All that craziness now. There it is. Who said it? All the way up. All the way up. All the way up. Not partially. All the way up. Yeah. Now look at the devil. Look at the devil right here. Look at the devil. Look at this. Look at him. This is what he say. This is what he say. This is Isaiah 14 and 14. And I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, and I will be like the most high. You are not going to be like God. That's what he was trying to do with Eve. You, you could be uh, created by God, but he was, not, he was making equality to the detriment of God. That's what he was trying to do. Verse 40, I read that. Let me give you this last thing. <clears throat> go, to, go, go back to Luke 6, please. Go back to Luke 6. And then 41, we're going to stop here. 41, no, 41. 41, 41. So what I want to say to everybody, listen. Listen, before you open up your mouth against your brother, is that what I want? Yeah, Luke 41. That's what I said, didn't it? Okay, Luke 41. Okay, now watch this. Everybody uh, write this. Without love, <clears throat> we feel the right and the justification to have bad behavior and talk about people. Without love. Ain't no way in the world I'm talking about nobody with love. Without love, you'll do it. And, what love, and what, without love, you're talking about somebody and rejoicing in their sin. Everybody look at me. You don't rejoice in people's sin. Oh, hallelujah. Man, I heard they did that. Don't rejoice in iniquity. 2 Corinthians 13, then 1 Corinthians 13, then we'll finish. Come on quickly now so we can finish now. 1 Corinthians 13. Praise the Lord. Strong, I'm strong in the Lord now. Ah, we killing giants in up in here. Anybody, are we killing giants up in here? I said we killing giants in here. How many rich people in here? Come on, come on. How many rich people? How many rich? How many rich? Anybody rich? We rich up in here. All right, now watch this. Watch this. 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and uh, verse 6. Does not rejoice in iniquity. In other words, I don't rejoice at the hearing about somebody sinning, but I rejoice in truth. And the truth is, whatever they did, God then forgave them. Everybody look at me. Listen to me. God don't look at your past. I'm not going to discuss past things that you can remember. I don't remember no more. I'm not thinking about what you used to do. God ain't into your past, into your future. Your past is covered by the blood of Jesus. Your future look like the promises of God. Your future look like what he didn't promise. And, and, and he says, love, man. He says, love, love thinketh no evil. Verse 4, love thinketh no evil. Love what? It thinketh no evil, it does not rejoice in iniquity or in sin, it, but it rejoices in truth. Now go back to this last thing. Go to Luke 6. We're going to slam this down real nice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 41. And it says, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? Everybody know what a speck is? Show me a speck. What's a speck? How big is a speck, Jackie? It's a small, what is it? It's small. What's a speck? A freckle? Is that a speck? Well, how many agree that a freckle on your face is a, a, a speck? What's a speck? How big is a speck? Zariah, how big is a speck? Huh? Teeny tiny? Angela, how big is a speck? All right, let's go back to the Bible. So we all agree that it's small. Is a speck, ob can you observe it with the natural eye? You really can't observe it with a natural eye. All right, now let's go dig in. Somebody gonna get saved up in here today. Why does, uh, how do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but not perceive the plank in your own eye? 
Now, everybody know what a plank is. Yeah. Plank as big as this pus. <laughs> it's definitely big as your head. <laughs> big old plank. You heard people say, you big old plank head. <laughs> a plank cover your whole face. So he said, your brother got a speck and you got a plank. Or how can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the speck from your eye when you yourself do not see the plank in your own eye. The plank in your own eye. Hypocrite. You got a plank in your own eye. Hypocrite. <laughs> he said, hypocrite. First remove the, the plank from your own eye and then you can see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Is that powerful? Yeah. But you know what? That's not just the correction of behavior. We want to get in the mode where we can love people. You can't love if you're looking at my speck. You're talking about my family, talking about my mama, talking about my church. How can we do anything? And some people rejoice on that. And 99% and of that stuff is straight up fabrication and a lie. At least in America, if you got a complaint, you go to the court of law, they get their side, you get your side. But when you when you operating in that low level kind of spirit, all you want to do is hear something negative. That's a straight chat. You people like that never really progress in life. I'm not gonna waste you should not waste your life on foolishness. What are you you're a CPA, aren't you? What are you what did, what did, what did you maybe in school? Aerospace. I draw smart people. I'm a smart man. How many law schools you didn't got accepted to I.O.? Three. <laughs> like some people don't get accepted to nothing. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How many of y'all strong in the Lord in here? Amen. Look at that there. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. How many? Oh, yeah. We ain't just talking. They, talk, they live in this thing. Now, some of y'all I didn't see you ain't seen you in church in a couple of weeks. I need to, you need to stand in need of prayer. <laughs> All right, I'm done. God bless y'all.